Hello guys, welcome and in this video I'm going to be teaching you, I'm going to be showing you how to build this tic-tac-toe game using Pygame. So I will just demonstrate the game here for you. We are going to be creating a artificial intelligence, so an AI that you can play, it can play against you. And we're going to be creating first a randomized AI which just places icons or place the pieces in a random place on the board and also we're going to be creating a smarter AI that kind of knows where it should place the next piece okay so let me just demonstrate this for you in here with a smarter AI so I'm going to be starting placing my piece over here okay so the AI went in there so by the logic if I place my one in here the AI should know that I will win here so the AI will put a piece on the middle here so when I do that the AI comes in the middle in here and doesn't let me win okay now let's try if I put it on top here then the AI puts it in the middle here in this case the AI had two options right so it could have placed it in here or in here and either of these options I would have won okay so now I can win on this side so the AI chose to place in here so I don't win on the cross but then when I place it in the middle here then I win on this side here okay so if I click on play again now it's the AI turn so I think the whoever starts first is randomized so every time is uh, it's random who starts first so and then we, we are marking the score on the top here as well so let me see if I can win from the AI. Okay, so you see the AI placed in here. So if I don't put the piece in here, the AI will win. So if I put my one in here, for example, then the AI knows that that is a win move in there. Okay, and then I lose, I lose it. Okay, the AI started again. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna go in here. Now, you see, now the AI trapped me because I have two options. The AI will win either here or here. So if I put in here, the AI win here. If I put in here, the AI wins in there. And that's what it does now. So let's get cracking and let's start with this tutorial. All right, so I went ahead and I created a folder called Tic-Tac-Toe and I added three files inside of this folder, okay? So we have a main file, a settings file, and a sprites file, okay? So the main file, this is what we have, you have to type it in insights, okay? So we import Pygame and then we import settings and also the sprites. We create a class called game. In the constructor, we initialize Pygame and then we just create a window, okay? So self.screen, we're gonna be using this screen variable. Pygame.display set modes, this width and height is gonna come from the settings. We're gonna take a look at that in a second. And also we're putting a title to it, which also this variable title comes from the settings. And then we create a clock. Now a few variables in here, a few functions in here. So a new function, which will create a new game every time you click on the screen when you end the game. And then we have a run function, which actually runs the game. We have this variable playing set to true. While this variable is true, we're gonna be running the events, update, and draw. Okay, so this basically is the game loop. And this clock.tick is just to regulate the FPS. So, and then we have this update function here, which has nothing inside. The draw function, we are just filling the screen with this background color, which also will come from the settings. We're going to take a look in a second. And also we are flipping the display. Okay, nothing else in the draw function. The event, just a simple event to check whether the player is quitting the game. So it's clicking on the X button. Okay, and then we just create the game object another loop in here which runs the new function and the run function so once this run function stop looping okay so once we get out of this then we'll go back to the new function here and create a new game and then run the game again okay so pause the video here if you need to just copy all of this i'm going to put the size a bit bigger actually just copy all of this pause the video if you need to 
and there we go and then in the settings file what you're gonna do in here is this is a bit more simpler we just have to find a few colors in here so we're only gonna be using white dark gray which is the background and the light gray for the I think it's for the lines for the crossing okay the game settings the width is that variable that we saw in here when we create the window so the width 500 oops width 500 height 600 FPS I use 60 and the title tic-tac-toe and then we just define the background color here I just set that to dark gray okay pause the video in here if you need to copy this and if you have everything correct once you go back to your main if you run you should see a window painted in this dark gray color okay and uh, the last file in here which is the sprite it has nothing on it we're gonna be working on that file later all right so let's start with this we're going to actually go back to this settings file let me just close this to make it a bit bigger we're gonna come back to the settings file and we're just gonna write a few more settings in here okay so the next thing we're gonna be using here is a tile size constant which is 120 that is the size of each of the square so on the tic-tac-toe we have that grid which has like uh, it has nine tiles on it or so nine squares okay so we're gonna that's the size of those tiles or those squares okay and then we're just gonna create this board size here for the constant 3 which is 3 by 3 I'm just creating those constants just to make it a bit easier so we don't have to hard code those numbers now we're going to have two margins in here okay so if you watched my previous video on the wordle you probably know what I'm talking about those margins will make sure that the grid or the board is in the center of the screen so if you increase the size of your screen of this the width or the height in here if you wanted to make it a bit bigger you could potentially increase the style size and increase the width and you the board will always be in the center okay you probably have to change some other settings as well but with this margin y and x we'll make sure that the board is always in the center so we're gonna create this first one is the margin x which is an integer we have a bracket another bracket inside we have width minus brackets again board size times style size exit out of two brackets divided by two okay if you highlight this line here and you press command or control d you should duplicate that we just change this from margin y and then we're changing this to height okay so the board size is the same for the margin y as well okay and then the last thing we need to do in the settings file we're going to define a function in here which is called board to pixel okay which will take an X and Y coordinates meaning it's gonna take a X and Y coordinate from a 2d list okay and it will convert that into pixel so we can place the the icons when we click on them on the tiles we can place the icons in the correct place in the screen okay so we're just going to use this simple uh, function just to convert from boards or from uh, 2d list to pixel so in here we're just going to return straight away we're going to return margin x plus tile size times x okay so times the x parameter in there comma margin y plus style size times the y parameter okay so very simple just a function to convert from the board x and y to pixel x and y okay we're gonna use this function a couple of times all right so that's it for the settings file okay so the next thing to do in here is to go to our sprite class uh, sorry a sprite file 
there should be nothing in there at the moment and we're gonna create a few classes now so first thing we're going to import Pygame and then we're gonna import everything from the settings import all okay first class we're gonna be creating in here is the board uh, the board class okay which will define the boards basically and then in here we'll create a constructor uh, we don't need any parameters in there in this constructor we're just gonna be creating a board list variable which a is gonna be a 2d list okay so this 2d list is gonna be something like this okay we're going to have a list which is that this board list variable and inside of this list we're gonna have three more lists okay which is the rows of the boards and then we're gonna have three columns in here okay so imagine that this is our boards okay so we have three by three and then every time we click on a square on the board or the computer will place a icon this board list is gonna be changed for X or for O and then we're gonna be playing the game like that okay and then we're gonna have the checks to see if there is in a rows like this or like that and then we do the win function okay so basically you can do you can literally just do this and it should work but I'm gonna show you another way of doing this in one line okay so we we should have here a list okay and then inside of this list we're gonna put another list and inside of that we're gonna do empty string for underscore in range of the board size and then you exit out of one of the lists and you do for underscore in range of the board size as well okay so we're doing in an inside list here we're doing uh, empty string in range of the board size and then on the outside we're doing this whole list in range of the board size and it, it will create that to the list as well next function here we're going to define is the draw boards okay so we're just gonna take a screen uh, parameter in there that is gonna be just gonna draw the boards into this screen basically and in here to draw the board is basically gonna draw those lines of the board okay so that's what we're gonna be doing here so we do for row in range of zero tile size times two and we skip by tile size okay by game dot draw dot line and we'll take this screen white and this is gonna be margin x plus row plus tile size and then the second argument in here is the margin y and then that's one and then we exit out of one parenthesis brackets we do a comma and then we do another bracket margin x plus row plus tile size comma margin y plus board size times tile size and then exit out comma four <coughs> okay so what is this doing to draw a line we need two sets of coordinates so the x and y coordinate of one point and then the x and y coordinate of the second point and then it will draw a line between those two points so that's what we have in here so the first argument is just a screen where we want to draw the line the second argument is the color so we're going to be using white and then we have the first set of coordinates in here in a tuple 
So we have the X coordinates and the Y coordinate of the first point, and then we have the, the second set of coordinates right here, okay? So we have the X coordinate in here and the Y coordinate in there. And then this four in here is just the width of the line, so the thickness of the line. So you can make it bigger if you want to, or thinner, okay? I just like to use four. Okay, so basically, this is just a little bit of math to get those lines, so we don't have to draw the line manually. So I'm just using a for loop from 0 to tile size times 2, which is 3 tile size basically. And we're going to skip by tile size, sorry, 2 tile size, and then we're going to skip by tile size. So we do this twice, okay, so we have 2 sets of line on the vertical and two sets of line on the horizontal. What we're gonna do is... I'm gonna copy this. Alright, so let's just copy that. Place it in there. And instead of row, it's going to be column. And then we have screen, we have white. And now it's gonna be the inverse. So we're just gonna invert these uh, parameters, okay? So you see the first X and Y is margin plus row plus style size and the Y is just margin Y. So now we're gonna invert this. The first one is gonna be just margin X. The second one is going to be margin Y plus column plus style size. Okay, so I just cut it out from this side and I paste it in here and I change the column from row to column basically. And then the second one in here is going to be the same thing. So we'll have margin X plus board size, okay, plus time style size. And then the margin Y is going to be margin Y plus column plus tile size okay and then the four in here is just uh, the thickness again okay I hope this makes sense to you guys this is just a little bit of math that I had to come up with just to draw those two lines so I don't have to draw them uh, one by one you could have draw them one by one as well if you wanted to but using the margin here also it makes sure that the board is in the middle of the screen all right so we're going to be making another two functions in here one is to see if the if we're clicking on the board so if it's clicked so clicked okay and then we're going to be returning those coordinates transforming those coordinates into pixel and then placing the icon where we clicked okay so in here we're going to take a mouse X and mouse Y coordinate. So whenever we click on the board, it's going to call this function. It's going to take the mouse Y, uh, X and Y coordinates of where we clicked. And it's going to check if it's in the board and whether that space is valid, if it's not valid. And then if it's valid, then we just place our um, icon in there if it's our turn. This function here very simple just a simple function to check if we're clicking on the board so we're gonna do a, a nested for loop in here so for row in range of the length of self dot board list okay so we're gonna use that variable there and then for column in range of the length of self dot board list row okay so we're just taking all the lists, all the rows on the self dot list, and then all the items in the row. Okay, and then we're going to create these two variables in here, x and y, which we're going to be calling that board to pixel function that we created earlier, and we're going to be passing the column and the row. Okay, it's important that you pass in column first and then row next. Okay, otherwise it's going to be inverted. And then as this function here returns this x and y, we're just saving that into this x and y coordinate here. So you see the row and the column, they are going to be from 0 to 2, which is the length of the boards list. 
and then we're gonna take that so for example if we click on the top left corner of the board that's zero zero we're gonna take that zero zero we're gonna put into this board to function the board to pixel and it's gonna transform that into coordinate pixel coordinate that can be placed on the boards based on where the board is in the screen okay I hope that makes sense guys so we're gonna take this coordinates and we're gonna do a simple if statement in here to check if the mouse X oops if X is less or equals to mouse X less or equals to X plus tile size so we're just checking if our mouse X coordinate is in between this coordinate here which is the left side of a square okay or a tile on the board and the X plus tile size is the right side of that tile so we need to see if it's in between those tiles uh, in between the tile so we're clicking on inside of a tile so and then we do the same thing for the Y so Y less or equals to mouse Y less or equals to Y plus tile size and also we need to check whether the board list row column okay so we're taking that row and column there not the X and Y just to see if that is equals to an empty list uh, to an empty string because if there is another if it's not empty that means we already placed our icon in there or the computer placed an icon in there so it's not empty we can't overwrite the icon okay so we can only place if it's valid if it's empty and then this we're just gonna return the row and the column okay so we return the row and the column not the X and Y so the X and Y is just to check against the mouse coordinates because the mouse position is gonna give us back a position in pixel in the screen okay so that's why we need to convert this to a pixel in the screen and then we just return that row and the column and otherwise so if we go through all the tiles and we're not clicking in any of the ones on the boards or we're clicking in a tile that already has a icon on it then we're just going to be returning none none okay so then this is gonna be none none and then we're gonna be checking whether the self.click returns a number or non non so if he returns a number then we can do something about it if he returns this non and non that means we're not clicking on the boards or we're clicking in in another icon and we do nothing basically and the last function we're gonna be creating in this board class before we go back to our main is just to check if the board is full so is board full and there are two ways of doing this so one way you can do is just a simple for loop in range of the board list and then for icon in row so we're just looping through all the rows in the board list and then for each icon for each element in the row and if the icon is equals to empty then we return false if none of them returns false then that means it's empty uh, it's, it's full this is one way of doing it but I'm also gonna show you this other way of doing it which is in one line so we're gonna return and we're gonna be using the any function so we return not any empty string in row for row in self.boards list okay so essentially what's this any function do is returns true if a boolean x is true for any x in the iterable if the iterable is empty returns false so basically we are checking whether there's any empty string in the row for the row in self.board list okay 
and we're gonna return true if there is any empty but we want the opposite so that's why we put the not in here we return false if there is any empty string in the boards and then we return true if you don't find any of this that means the board is full okay so the, just before we finish this part let's just go back to the main function and in the new function here uh, sorry to the main file and then in the game class the new function we're going to just create this boards uh, object okay so self boards equals to boards and we're just gonna draw that into the screen so we come down to the draw function just call that boards dot draw boards and then pass in our screen okay if you run this now you should have those lines in there so the board is drawn on the screen okay so I'm gonna be ending here for this part I hope you guys understand this uh, let me know if you have any comments or let me know if you don't understand some parts just leave a comment down below and then I'll be checking them and I'll be answering to you okay and I will see you guys in parts two